In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the net workdays DAX function that was released recently in Power BI. We'll look at the basics of how you can start using it and also some options to customize this even further. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So network days is a function that allows you to count the number of working days between two dates. And for the longest time I've known, Power BI has never supported network days as a function, even though it's readily available in Excel or Excel formulas. And not so long ago, I created a video that shows you how you can create your own net workdays function in Power Query, so you can calculate your working days. While that video is still informative and it teaches you how you write your own custom functions, there's now a built-in way you can calculate working days using this new net workdays DAX function. So let me show you how it works. But before we get to it, let's have a look at what it says in the documentation. So here it says that this function returns the number of whole work days between two dates inclusive. So if you say uh, how many days between the 1st of May to the 3rd of May, that will be three days because it includes the dates that you have in uh, have you, you have declared. The parameters specify which and how many days are weekend days. Weekend days and days specified as holidays are not considered as work days. So in total, you can provide it four different parameters. Two of them are required, so the start date and the end date. And the two that you need to add and can add as an optional parameters are the weekends to specify what the weekend dates are and the holiday date. So if you have bank holidays or non-working days that you want uh, to be excluded in the count, this is where you need to provide them. So the function, once you provide the parameters that it needs, will simply return the integer number of whole workdays. So it will just give you the count of how many workdays there are between those two dates. And this is, this is how the expression sort of looks like. So this we simply declare the dates here, but we will use a separate date in our table to explain and show how this network days work. So there's a lot of jargon here in this documentation. So let me show this in a demo instead. So here's a simple Power BI report that I created to demonstrate and show how this new network days will work. So I've already added here a couple of tables so one is the sample dates table, which just has a list, uh, three rows of uh, these dates. We have the start date and the end date columns. And for each row, we have uh, a start date and the end date, which we will show how the network dates will react to them. I also have a separate calendar table, which we normally use for our time intelligence calculations. But in this case, I'm only showing it as a way to distinguish and show which days are uh, weekends or weekdays. So just the week names. I also have another table here, the bank holidays table, which just has a, a one date in it. And I will show you how you can integrate this into your network days later. So we can exclude this date as well. So first let's have a look at this table at the bottom here. And let's say our requirement is to count the number of working days between these two dates. So in a simpler world, we will simply create a new column in our sample dates column. We'll name this one elapsed and we'll simply do end date minus start date which in the simplest of terms dragging it into this table this would if it was a whole number 
will simply give us the number of days between these two dates. So from the first to the fifth, it's four days. However, the problem with this and just simply doing this maths calculation is that between the first and the fifth, if we take this first row as an example, there are weekends in between those dates. So between the first and the fifth, we have Saturday and Sunday, which we don't want to count in our elapsed days. So how do we exclude those? So to exclude those weekend dates, we simply need to use the network days function. So let's start by going back to our function here, the elapsed function. We'll delete everything that we've done so far except the name, and we'll start by declaring network days. So as I mentioned, there are four parameters that you can provide, two of them are required. So we need to provide the start dates and the end date. So in this case, we'll just say, take the start dates column and take the end date column. The last two parameters are optional, so we will leave them excluded for now. And if you hit enter, you'll see that the numbers in the elapsed will change. What network days does by default is to treat Saturday and Sundays as weekends. So in that case, it will exclude Saturdays and Sundays when it's calculating the number of days between two dates. So in this case now, if you look at the dates between the 1st and the 5th of January, you will have Saturday and Sunday both weekends. So these are not included in the counts. So it only shows us three days, which is the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're gonna come back to these weekends uh, in a second. But for now, I just need to mention a couple of things about the network days. So the first thing that you need to bear in mind is that the dates can be reversed. So for example, if you have uh, end date and uh, start date, so this will be reversed. This will calculate uh, the same thing, except that obviously it will be flipped around. So it will be negative if the uh, beginning part is bigger than the, or, or, or later than the second parameter. The second thing to bear in mind is that the net work days handles blank values without erroring out. So for example, let's say that our second parameter, um, which is uh, required, Let's say that this is blank. So I'm just gonna use the blank function to pretend that there, there, there's no value in here. So here you will see that the elapsed value will show a crazy number, but it won't error out if there's no data in one of the date uh, values. It will simply replace any blank values to a default date of uh, 30th of December, 1899, which is why it's giving us uh, this number uh, in our function. So this means that you can have a blank on one of the dates or you can have blanks on both and this won't error out your network days function. You can also define the dates manually on either side by simply using the date function. So you can use date here to say 20, uh, just define it uh, manually for you or you can use the date literal equivalent, which also results in a date value. But the key thing is if you are going to use a uh, date or define it manually, you must convert it and put date values in these two parameters. Otherwise, this function will error out. So now let's go back and reset this network date. So we were start date and end date, just to put it back. So as I mentioned before, there are two optional parameters that we haven't looked at, which we can do now. So the first is that the weekends. So by default, this function treats Saturday and Sunday as weekend if you didn't put any uh, values on your third parameter. So when you're counting working days as we saw, it excludes these dates. But what if you work in a country where the weekends fall on different dates? Or what if you work in different shift patterns? The third parameter will allow you to choose which days in the week are your weekends. So for example, if you work in one of the Gulf countries like Saudi Arabia or Dubai, their weekends fall under Fridays and Saturdays. So in this case, in the third parameter, instead of omitting or not defining it at all, you will just put seven here. And this will exclude Saturday or Friday and Saturday as their weekends. 
So how did I know to put seven in here? So in the documentation itself, it tells you what number you want or you should put in this uh, parameter based on which days are your weekend. So uh, obviously in this case, we were excluding or wanting to exclude Friday and Saturday as the non-working days. So we simply just say seven. But if you, let's say, don't work on Sundays, you just put 11 and that will exclude just Sundays. Another type of dates that you might want to exclude are dates like bank holidays. So Christmas, New Year celebrations, and in that case, you need to put this in the fourth parameter of your function. And the fourth parameter, if you'll notice, will ask for a table instead of a normal scalar value. And you'd need to provide it a table with just one column of dates. So at the moment, we've already created that one for you. So I just showed you the bank holidays table only has one value in there. So it has a column one column and it has a list of dates. We, for simplicity's sake, we just added one uh, date here to exclude. It's important that you provide a table with only one column, otherwise it won't work with the net workdays function. So here is the bank holiday for the New Year's uh, day and we want to account for this when we're counting for the net workdays. So in order to do that, we simply need to go back to our elapsed here and include as our fourth parameter, this table that we've created, the bank holidays table. So if you hit enter, you'll notice that the elapsed column recalculates and it will exclude both the weekend and the bank holiday on the 3rd of January. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with the net workdays DAX function and how you can use it to calculate workdays more effectively. Thanks for watching, as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.